What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to model a house using Medik BIM. So Medik's extensions are great extensions for creating things like detailed foundations, framing, roof trusses, and he also has an electrical extension. And I will note that that extension is on sale today and tomorrow as a part of his Black Friday sale. So you can find that sale and all the other sales that are still running on my Black Friday page at the sketchupessentials.com slash Black Friday. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this extension is broken up into a couple different tools and you can buy these tools separately or you can get them all as a, uh, all together inside of the Medik BIM package. And you'll notice how you can find that on his website. So I will link to that in the notes down below. And so Medik BIM comes with uh, these extensions packaged together, or you can get them all separately. So you can get the truss, the wall, or the foundation separately. I think you can get the electrical separately as well. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a look at how we can use these in order to create a detailed building. And so these truly are, um, these extensions are some of the most detailed that I've found for creating like actual building models. And the cool things, the cool thing about them is it really contains the tools to do a lot of the things that you need in order to create like building models. So for example, Medik Foundation allows you to draw a foundation. So you can either come in here and click on the button to draw a stem wall foundation, or you can rough out a building footprint. So let's say you had like a 25 foot long, We'll make this very simple by a 20 foot wide building. We'll just draw a rectangle in here. Well then, you can select that. You can select the foundation add-on and you can select the kind of foundation, um, what kind of interior bearing is going on as well as how to draw the foundation. So in this case, we're gonna use the face in order to do this. So I'm gonna click on face. Then this is gonna, this is gonna allow us to select the face. So in this case, I'm just going to click on this one right here. And this is going to allow us to come in here and adjust a lot of different things having to do with the foundation. I'm not going to get too far into the weeds about these right now. So I'm pretty much just going to kind of leave this as is. And I'm going to click on OK. What that's going to do, and it'll also come in here and add rebar if you ask if you want it to do that. When I click on OK, that's gonna generate a foundation from the face you had selected. And so let's say that you had a more complex face. So let's say we had a face like, we'll call it this one. You could do the same thing. So I can run this, select the face, and generate my foundation based on the face. So you can see how generating these is really quick with this tool. You can see how it comes through and it'll generate the anchor bolts based on the spacing that you select. Um, if you click inside of here, there's also actually rebar that's been added um, based on what, what I had selected. So you can come in here, you can set this to actually generate all of those different things. So now let's add a slab. So to add a slab, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slip, click on this um, face right here, and we're just gonna run this option for draw a slab on grade. And we're just gonna use the face option again. So I'm gonna click on okay, and you can come in here and you can set things like your footing width, you can set your slab thickness. Um, it'll put like a thickened edge around the outside. So if you wanna do a thickened edge, you can do that. And then you can also set if you want reinforcement or anchor bolts or sub base. So in this situation, I'm just going to say yes on reinforcement and we'll say yes on sub base. When we do that, it's gonna ask us for some additional information like the kind of reinforcing, spacing, other things like that. So I'm gonna click on okay. It's gonna ask for depth of sub base. I'm gonna say six inches. I'm gonna click on okay. What that's gonna do is that's gonna go through and that's gonna generate a slab right here. And I can click and delete out this face. And so notice how if you look at this, this actually added sub base down below as well as a slab. So if you were to take a section cut of this building, for example, like this, and we're gonna turn our section fills off, you can see how you've got your actual slab profile and I probably need to work on this piece a little bit, but that's okay. Um, you've got your actual slab profile, you've got your base down below, and you have your reinforcing all in here. So you can see how this allows you to be very detailed with what you can create inside of SketchUp. So now let's go through and use the next one of the Medik BIM functions, the wall function. So, um, Medik wall 
is a separate extension that comes within the BIM suite that comes with tools for creating walls. So notice how this has a number of tools. We're just gonna do kind of a quick overview of them. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save my model. And so notice how this tool gives you options for creating different kinds of walls like gable walls and other things like that. But for now, let's just draw a simple wall. So to do that, we're gonna click right here and it's gonna give us options for the wall we can create. So notice how you can set everything from the wall header height to the overall wall height, really kind of whatever you want. So for example, I could type in a value of 120 inches. That's gonna give me a wall height of 10 feet. So now let's start clicking in order to place our wall. So for example, I can click from here to here to set my wall. So notice how it's really easy to do this and place this. So I'm placing this right here. Notice how this wall is coming in with framing, it's coming in with sheathing, um, all the things that you could need for your exterior of your building. And the cool thing about this is, and we're gonna go ahead and close this in, we can right click on our wall and we can adjust it. So we can actually edit our wall assembly just like this. So let's say you wanted everything to be taller. You could just come in here and instead of 120 inches, let's say we wanted it to be 144 inches. So we can click on the option for update. Notice how that selected wall gets taller. So you can use this in order to make your walls taller. Another cool thing about this, and I'm not gonna get into all of the details here, but notice how you can adjust the way the corners come together. You can also use the opening tools in order to create openings in your walls. So for example, let's say I wanted to add some windows. Well, you can click right here and then move your mouse over the wall. Notice how these wall assemblies are smart, meaning that they pick up on the fact that you wanna add a window and you can add them just by clicking. So if we look at this on the back side, notice how this is actually adding the framing for the window opening. You can also adjust the kind of header that comes in here. So for example, if you didn't want this to be a six by six, let's say you wanted it to be two two by sixes, you can actually update that. So if you wanted to edit this opening, you can click on edit opening, you can select an opening, and let's say we wanted to change this header. So maybe we wanted it to be two two by sixes. You can actually update this so that this looks the way that you want it to look. Or let's say three two by sixes. So the framing is actually updating based on this information. And so there's other things you can add as well. So things like, let's say we wanted to add a garage door. You can click in here in order to add a garage door opening. So adding openings in your framing is super easy using this extension. So if we wanted to add a door, we could do that as well. And again, notice how the actual framing is adjusting based on these openings being added. So you can use this in order to live add and update your openings inside of your models. So one of the other cool options about this is you can select one of the walls and notice how there's a tool in here for scenes. Well, if you click on it and check the box for create framing elevations, you can actually create a scene that shows you the framing elevation of that wall. So if I click on wall three, so you can see how this created a wall inside of your model where you can see the framing. And you could also come in here and hide the exterior pieces so you could just see the framing and send this to layout if you wanted to actually detail this out and create plans with your framing. All right, so now let's add some trusses. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna select a truss, truss type. So in this case, I'm just gonna click on roof, roof trusses and just go with the common truss. So I'm gonna do a common right here going to use this in order to place our truss and we're going to find the corner point over here. We're going to find the corner point over here and we'll just move our mouse across and model our truss out this way. And it's going to ask us some things like the kind of trusses we want to add, other things like that. In addition, there's also some advanced options. So you can include things like um, sheathing and other things like that if you want to using this tool. In this case, I'm gonna leave that as a no, but you can use this in order to make more adjustments to those trusses. But I'm gonna go ahead and click on Submit Advanced Options and that's gonna create our trusses right here. Well, now we need to create our trusses for the little edge across here. So we're just gonna do the same thing. 
And for this one, we're gonna figure this is gonna go probably to about right here. We're gonna click on OK, and click on OK. And so notice how we're getting a little bit of overlap in these trusses, right? So you've got some pieces right here that um, are coming into our building that really shouldn't be. So what we can do is we can use the Medic Tools Trim Member function, or actually we're gonna use the Split function in order to do that. So it's gonna ask us to select a splitting plane, which in this case, I'm, I'm gonna select this plane right here. And then it's gonna ask me the entity I wish to split, which is this set of trusses. So notice how what that's done is that's come through here and that's split all of these different edges. Then once we're done, we're just going to hit the escape key to get out of there. Well, now I can just double click into these trust groups. And notice how these are created as components. And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to select these components, right click on them and make them unique. And so when we make them unique, you can delete out those edges. So notice how they were nicely split so that we can delete those out. And then the last thing I wanna do is I just wanna add trusses running from here over to here. So to do that, I'm gonna use the truss set function. So I'm gonna click on truss set and we're gonna select the valley set. What the valley set is going to do is that's gonna allow us to add the little trusses that run from here to here. So first thing it's going to ask us for is your main roof plane. Well, in this case, that's going to be on one of these faces right here. And then it's asking for the center line of the intersecting trusses. That's going to be these trusses right here. And then it's going to ask for the ridge of the intersection trusses. So in this case, I'm just going to click right here. And then it's going to give me some options. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And what that's going to do is that's going to generate my truss framing that now intersects with my other roof right here. So you can use this in order to generate that complex framing in here. There's a lot of other cool options in here as well, um, some of which are still under development, like some of the complex roof functions, but this gives you kind of an idea of the power of Medique Truss and how you can create detailed trusses inside of SketchUp. All right, so finally, let's say that we wanted to add some things like light switches. So Medeek Electrical allows you to do things like this. So for example, if I click on this button for create switch, notice how I can mouse over things like my Medeek wall items and it'll actually place a switch in here. And you can adjust different things about those if you want. So you can add things like outlets or electrical panels as well. So notice how you can set different heights, different environments, other things like that. There are some tools in here as well for some things like floor outlets and you can draw some wiring. Um, this is a little bit limited, but if you wanted to draw a wire from here to here, for example, you could do that. And then I'm just gonna hit enter. Notice how this draws this wire in there. So you can use this to actually add that wiring in here. There's a couple different wire types you can choose from. So if you do need to come in here and draw different things like that, you can. Um, note that this does add notations on your floor. So if I was to go to parallel projection mode, look at this straight up and down, notice how this does add the symbols on the wall for things like your 200 amp um, 200 amp box or your switch, other things like that. So that is also a nice feature if you're drawing electrical stuff. You can use this to kind of rough out where your electrical is going to go as well. All right, so like I said, this extension is on sale through, I believe, tomorrow. So if you want to check that out, you can do that on my Black Friday deals page at the sketchupessentials.com slash Black Friday. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.